Most mathematicians won't accept that the concept of infinity is absurd. They embrace it. And they even believe that there are different sizes of infinity. They claim that Cantor's diagonal argument proves that the infinity of the natural numbers is smaller than that of the real numbers. But again, it looks like another case of rejecting any arguments that go against what they want to prove. To demonstrate the flaws in Cantor's approach, consider the argument that the infinity of the whole numbers is the same size of that of the even numbers. It sounds absurd to claim that there are as many even numbers as there are whole numbers. Even so, by Cantor's logic, we can supposedly prove this by matching up the numbers in the two lists. We match the even numbers 2, 4, 6 and so on with the whole numbers 1, 2, 3 and so on. After processing up to number 6, we will have matched all three of the even numbers and the first three whole numbers, leaving three whole numbers not matched. If we continue the matching process, then we might say the number of matched whole numbers tends towards infinity. But so does the number of not matched whole numbers. So it is obviously impossible to match all of the whole numbers. But by Cantor's logic, we can simply ignore the not matched problem and just assume that the two lists somehow exist in their entirety with all values in both lists inexplicably completely matched. This bizarre and totally inconceivable state of affairs is supposed to prove to us that there are just as many even numbers as there are whole numbers. Mathematicians choose to accept the mind-bending argument that all values can mysteriously match up, rather than the more straightforward argument that they obviously can't. And as we have already seen, mathematicians can choose to believe whatever argument they want to, and whatever they choose to believe will be declared to be mathematically correct. Next we'll consider Cantor's diagonal argument. To show how a diagonal argument works, consider a list of just three whole numbers. The diagonal argument provides a method for finding a value that is not already in the list. First we go down a diagonal and use the digits to form a new value. For our units column, we will take the units digit from the first number. Then we get our tens digit from the next number and so on. We can assume as many leading zeros as we need. It doesn't matter if the new value is already in the list because the next step is to change each digit in the new number. We could change any zero to one and change any digit that's not a zero to be a zero. This method of changing each digit in a diagonal will always generate a number not already in the list for any sized list. But what if we could have an infinite list containing all the natural numbers? Would we be able to construct a number that is not already in the set of all natural numbers? Well, supposedly we could apply the diagonal argument, but our result would be a different type of number. It wouldn't be a natural number because it would have infinitely many digits. To a disbeliever, the concept of infinitely many leading digits is as absurd as infinitely many trailing digits or infinitely many decimal places in that it forms an obvious contradiction, because all digits are a finite number of decimal places from the units column, and the representation consists solely of these finite distances. Now consider a list of the numbers 0, 0.0 to 0 0.9. This list is restricted to non-negative numbers less than 1 with one decimal place. And so for this specified type of number, 10 unique values would make it a full list. In order to go down a diagonal, we would have to use leading zeros, trailing zeros, or both. 
and the result would not be of the same type as the numbers in the list. As with the previous example of the full list of natural numbers, the diagonal argument result is not of the right type to fit in the list or set. Indeed, it is always the case that the diagonal argument produces a result of a different type when applied to a full set of any given number type. Note that as we change this example to allow more decimal places such as two decimal places, then three decimal places and so on, the size of the diagonal result grows exponentially. So it is easy to appreciate why the diagonal result for a full list will always need to contain far more digits than any number in the list. But now let's assume that all real numbers from 0 up to but not including 1 are listable. If we apply the diagonal argument, should we expect the result to be of the wrong type? Who knows what really happens when we supposedly have infinitely many digits? Perhaps the result will be the wrong type. Perhaps the idea that we can process all of them is problematic. Or perhaps one or more of our assumptions may have been invalid. But if we claim the result will be of the right type, then we can claim to have found a missing value, and hence proof by contradiction that real numbers can't be listed. Then we can convince ourselves that we can conceive of infinities of different sizes, and we can give them different names such as Aleph Null and Aleph One. Mathematicians want infinite decimals to be valid and so they'll reject any argument against the answer they want to be true. And the answer they want to be true is that we can prove that real numbers can't be listed. For the disbeliever, this highlights the massive shortcomings of proof by contradiction. The biggest problem with proof by contradiction is that it tells you that something in your argument is wrong, but it doesn't say what it is. In the diagonal proof by contradiction we assumed that the concept of infinitely many is a valid concept. The concept of a real number is a valid concept. A static numeric representation can have infinitely many digits. We can complete the diagonal process on infinitely many digits. The result of the diagonal argument will be the right type. And the list goes on because we assumed many things. Finally, we have the assumption that real numbers between 0 and 1 can be listed. But this last one is what the mathematicians want to claim is what caused the contradiction. So they just claim that all other assumptions are given or assumed to be true. In other words, they simply choose what they want to prove as being the thing that they have proved. This argument is nothing more than complete and utter rubbish. For a disbeliever, there's not one single convincing argument for why we need the concept of infinity in mathematics.